Hi folks, Vince here. This video is for those of you that are brand new to CNC machining or just got that Tormach installed. Let's show a simple but complete workflow of that first machining operation. Let's pretend we just drew up this part and this is what we want to machine. So the next step would be to go into the manufacturer workspace. After that, we have to create a new setup to place this part in a piece of raw stock. So go up here, click on setup. And this is the first time where you'll see your work coordinate system. The arrow points in the positive direction. Positive X to the right, positive Z going up, and positive Y to the back. This is how we're gonna have to set up our stock in our machine. As you can see, our stock point is in the middle of our stock. Now let's define the size of our raw stock. Let's go to the second tab right here. And under mode, instead of relative size, click on fixed size box. This will let us define our exact stock sizes. So for our width, we're at 5.66. For our depth, 1.51. And for our height, 0.75. Now Fusion automatically defaults to put that piece right in the middle, but what I'm gonna wanna do is raise the top of our part up to the top of the stock. So right here under our Z, under our model position, instead of center, click offset from the top and give it a zero offset. And what that'll do is raise the part right up to the top of our stock. Next, under our post-process tab, under our WCS offset, type in one. And what that is, is that'll be your work offset. One is G54, two is G55, and so on. I then save that as my user default. Now click OK, and you have your new setup. Next, let's cut a quick contour around this part. So let's go into our 2D menu, 2D contour, and for our tool, Let's select a three flute quarter inch. So I'm gonna go into my course library and select tool number three, which is our quarter inch three flute. Click select. And our speeds and feeds look good, defaults. For our geometry, we're gonna to wanna to select the contour that we want to machine. So I wanna machine right along this outside edge. If you click this arrow and it's inside your part, the machine will cut inside your part. So just make sure that arrow is on the right side. For heights, everything looks good. Our bottom height is our selected contours. So that means we'll machine that whole face on each side. Passes looks good. It's gonna take one pass. Defaults look pretty good. Let's click OK. And there you go. There's our contour toolpath. Now let's simulate that real quick. I like to have my simulation set up with our stock selected and colorization as comparison with a tolerance of 5 thou. And that'll let you see the thickness of the stock left over. Uh, it'll be blue if there's still stock over your tolerance and red if you're gouging the part. Let's click play. Speed this up a little bit. There you go, real easy, quick contour. Green means we're good to go. Let's exit the simulation. And now what we have to do is create an NC program. So what you're gonna do is come up here, click NC program, and under post, you're gonna to wanna to select the post for your machine. So we're using a Tormach path pilot. So I'll select that. Let's name this contour. All my other defaults are good. So let's go to operations, and this will select which operation that we're cutting. Also take note, this is tool number three. That has to correspond with our tool offsets in PathPilot at our mill. Click post. There you go, successfully posted. Next, let's take that USB drive and load our file onto PathPilot. 
The first thing we're going to want to do is take our machine out of e-stop and reference each axis. Then we'll plug in our USB drive. We'll navigate to the file tab and you'll see your file come up right here on the right. All you have to do is highlight that and copy it over to your main drive. Highlight it one more time over there and then click load G code. And what that does, it'll load it onto your main screen and you'll be able to see your whole program and see a 3D visualization of your toolpath. The next step is setting up our tool and measuring our tool height offset. The tool holder we're going to be using is a TTS quarter inch set screw holder. And the tool we're going to be using is the Lakeshore Carbide 3 Flute to match the tool in the library in Fusion. Let's just set that up real quick. Now you always want to use the least amount of shank stick out possible to ensure the most rigid tool. Just tighten that up pretty good. Now with our tool all set up in our holder, it's time to measure the tool length offset using our Tormach surface plate and height gauge. First thing we're going to want to do is make sure the top of the surface plate is clean and free of debris. I just wanted to add that you should also wipe the bottom of the height gauge as well. Next, we'll put the height gauge back on top and gently lower it down to the surface and then zero it out. And you're going to want to raise it back up again. Now, put your TTS tool in the corner and again, gently lower it down to the tip of the tool. Carbide is pretty brittle, so you want to be gentle. Now you can read the offset. 2.7825. I like to write these numbers down, but alternatively, you can actually plug this height gauge into PathPilot and it'll transfer the numbers for you. So T3, because it's tool 3 in Fusion, 2.7825. And there you go. That's the tool height offset. We'll be using a Heimer 3D taster to find the X, Y, and Z zeros for our work offset. So we'll also need to take a tool length offset for the Z as well. It's a little bit different than the other tools because we have to actually preload this to zero. So what I do is I'll gently touch it to the tip and then lock out the top fine adjust on the height gauge. And now I can just slowly move this gauge down to zero and zero on a Heimer is when the small red dial shows zero and then on the top the black dial shows zero on the top. So that zeroed out. Now let's write down this measurement. Tool 99 because our Heimers are always tool 99. 4.770. So now that we have all those tool length offsets measured, what we need to do next is input them into PathPilot. So what we'll do is we'll go down to this fourth tab, named offsets, and click on that. And here's where you'll input the description of all your tools, the diameter, and the diameter is only needed if we're using cutter compensation, which we won't be doing. So you can leave that at zero. And the length is where we will input those tool length offsets that we measured with that fixture plate and height gauge. So the first tool we want to input the offset is tool number three and you can click on it or what you can do is down here under your tool number you can actually input tool number three and it'll highlight it for you. So let's click on that and our offset was 2.7825. So let's put that in 2.7825 and hit enter. And the other offset was the Heimer, which is tool number 99. So what, instead of scrolling all the way down to 99, I'm just going to go back down to here, type in 99, hit enter. And now I will input that tool length offset as 4.770. And 
and hit enter. And because I don't have the probe in there, I'm going to change back to tool zero. And now we're ready to put our stock in and find our zeros. There are a couple different ways to jog the machine. To move the X and the Y axis, we'll use the arrow keys. To the right is X positive. To the left is X negative. For the Y, up is Y positive and down is Y negative. To move the Z, we'll use the page up and page down. Page up, Z up, page down, Z down. When you get close to the location that you want, on the screen, under jog, instead of continuous, you'll select step, and now you can select the size of the individual step your machine takes every time you hit the button. And now it's time to find the zeros for our stock. First, we'll start off with the Z0. And then, because our origin point is in the center of our stock, what we'll do is we'll touch off on one side, zero that, and then touch off on the other side. We'll just divide that value by two, and that will give us the center of our stock. We'll do that for both the X and the Y. Another little sanity check I like to do is in the MDI box, I like to type in a G0, X0, Y0. After that, I will double check my Z, and as long as that point matches what it shows in our Fusion setup, we should be good to go. When starting your program, it's a good practice to have your hand over the spacebar and the escape button. The spacebar will be a feed hold that you can restart with the cycle start, and the escape will actually stop your program. It's also a good practice to stop your Z before the tool gets to the top of the part. Pathpilot is very responsive, and all you have to do is hit the spacebar. That will feed hold and you'll see a value right here in your Z that's positioned in G54. That should be approximately how far the tool is above the part. That gives a good indication of the two most common ways to crash your machine. Number one being the wrong coordinate system values and number two, the wrong or no tool height value. As long as this value right here is approximately what the tool is above where you set your Z zero, you should be good to go.
Now I know that looks like a ton of steps, but once you walk through this workflow a couple times, it'll become second nature. The most important thing is no surprises. We should know exactly what's gonna happen when we hit that cycle start button. Well guys, I hope you enjoy the video and see you next time.